In all wars, feeding soldiers is a fundamental issue, and the Vietnam War was no exception. The best-fed troops are the ones that fight the best, since their bodies can expend the necessary forces to carry out the grueling military maneuvers. In the event of this contest, the men had to traverse miles of deep and dangerous jungle, and to do so without sufficient calories would simply have been impossible. On the other hand, an army that receives its daily rations on time and in due form keeps morale high, and is less likely to become discouraged by the adversities of war. In Vietnam, the Viet Cong guerrillas had to solve the food problem using their intelligence. Their economic resources were meager, and in the 1960s and 1970s they faced none other than the world's leading power, the United States. The Americans had enough money to guarantee their military a basic diet. The communist forces had to compete with this by appealing to ingenuity, and it can be affirmed that their strategy was ultimately successful, since in the end they were victorious. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you all about what the Viet Cong troops ate and how. Are you ready? Let's get started. The Viet Cong men lived the typical life of a guerrilla fighter, fraught with hardship, uncertainty, and challenges. They were up against the most powerful nation in the world, the United States, which vastly surpassed them in technology, firepower and supply capacity. However, the communists managed to get through the difficulties by force of will and cunning. They could not be picky with their food, but rather had to be willing to eat whatever was available at the time. They understood that, in such a context, a good meal was a luxury not always within their reach. The main food of the Viet Cong troops was rice. Vietnam is one of the largest producers of this type of cereal and, for this reason, it was the most abundant good in the country. The average gorilla consumed 750 grams of rice every day, and was given strict instructions to cook it only at night. The reason for this order was that smoke from a daytime bonfire could alert Americans patrolling nearby terrain, alerting them to a communist presence. In contrast, night fires were less likely to attract enemies, although they were not without risk. Sometimes, when the danger was too great, the Vietnamese handed out rations of pre-cooked puffed rice to their men. Unlike the common cereal, this variant had the particularity that it could be prepared with cold water and a handful of salt. Thus, they could avoid lighting a bonfire and attracting the attention of the Americans. Puffed rice allowed them to march for days, hardly stopping to set up camp to cook. Although the main food of the Viet Cong was rice, this product was complemented by others. Typically, the rations included varying amounts of cassava, an easy vegetable to cook in Vietnam due to its particular climatic conditions. It could be planted and cared for without much effort, providing the gorillas with a stable, low-cost food source. On the other hand, Bamboo was a fundamental resource for the communists, since it not only allowed them to design weapons and death traps, but it could also be cut into pieces, boiled and eaten. Finally, the daily rice dish was accompanied by wild fruits gathered in the jungle. Peanuts were also an extremely popular food among the gorillas, due to their high caloric content. An average soldier needed to consume about 4,000 calories every day, and to get them, peanut butter was extremely useful. Viet Cong troops could not easily eat meat. This food was considered a luxury or an extravagance, something that could only be afforded on very rare occasions. Usually, the gorillas ate nothing more than two kilos of meat per month, and this included fish, pork, chicken and beef. Fishing was one of the main activities of the Viet Cong, and when they had time and there were no enemies nearby, they would extract fish from the rivers that ran through the jungle. However, sometimes the Vietnamese could go months without eating meat, and not a few missed its taste so much that they hunted and ate jungle snakes. It was also common for Viet Cong members to grow their own food. The vast majority of the gorillas were peasants, so they had sufficient knowledge to plant and take care of vegetables, as long as there was no risk of an enemy attack. During the war, they grew corn, sweet potatoes, cassava, and sometimes raised animals for food. Incredibly, the Vietnamese found a use for the craters caused by U.S. bombing, 
converting them into ponds to raise ducks and fish. The Viet Cong established a complex supply system to ensure that their forces did not starve. First, the North Vietnamese government sent supplies to its soldiers using the famous Ho Chi Minh Trail, a set of narrow trails that stretched 10,000 miles, passing through North and South Vietnam, as well as Laos and Cambodia. The Americans could not easily navigate the roads due to the rough terrain and aggressive weather, so they were unable to catch the guerrillas traveling their smuggling supplies. The communists rode bicycles, each loaded with half a ton of food, clothing, ammunition or medical supplies, and pedaled hundreds of kilometers to deliver them to the front lines. On the other hand, the Viet Cong supply system implied strict control over the villages that were in its territory. These towns were obliged to pay taxes in money, food or in the form of work. Each family had to keep a quantity of rice to be consumed by the guerrillas, in case a battalion passed near the village and had to stock up. At the same time, the villages were required to keep hidden supplies in the countryside, which could be used by communist troops who did not wish to attract American attention. When it came to organizing food logistics, the black market was essential for the Viet Cong. During the war, a gigantic circuit of illegal trade in food, medicine and weapons existed in Vietnam, in which the governments of the North, South and neighboring countries participated. The guerrillas could enter the enemy city of Saigon without being detected and, once there, they would go to one of the many alleys where the black market of products operated. There, numerous stores and businesses offered food that the communists found hard to come by, such as packaged food made by the United States for its own soldiers. These food cans provided more variety in the diet, as well as higher caloric content and the possibility of being preserved for years without rotting. The black market operated with the endorsement of corrupt South Vietnamese officials, who were willing to turn a blind eye in exchange for a cut of the profits. In short, the Vietnam War was a fierce conflict, in which the communist troops had to test their willpower. The guerrillas suffered the food problem more than anyone else, and they had to use their ingenuity to avoid going hungry. Ultimately, the effort paid off, as they managed to defeat the United States, the world's leading military power. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, would you like to try Viet Cong food? Leave us your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.